What's up guys, welcome back to the channel, it's your boy Dominic Rich and in today's video, I'll be doing a tier list on the 2022 World Cup qualifiers in Asia. So guys, there will be 12 teams in the third round of Asian World Cup qualifiers. These teams have been put into two groups of six where the teams placing first and second in each group will qualify directly for the World Cup. The teams placing third will move into the fourth round where the winner will meet another team from another confederation to see who takes that final spot just like i did for the concacaf version the tears will be visa denied the bottom tier miss the flight which is not good the visa denied or you miss the flight means you're not going to qatar in my opinion but teams that could possibly or teams who i think will definitely go to qatar will go into the tears standby and you're going to qatar so here goes nothing the way we're gonna do this we're gonna start by group so we're gonna do group a first and then we're gonna finish off with group b so i'm gonna pick each of these teams from group a and i'll let you know which tier i think they belong in so let's start with the united arab emirates a team that has always shown promise and a side that made it to the 1990 World Cup. So it's 31 years since they were last at the grand event. They have been showing some promise and they came through a very, very tough group. And they have a nice little roster there going for them with the striker Ali Boot being their standout guy. They're currently managed by the Dutchman Burke Van Markweit, who has a ton of international experience with teams like Australia, the Netherlands, and Saudi Arabia. When you look at the other teams in this group, I actually think the UAE can compete, but I'm not too sure if they will top the group or come in second. They just might. So with all that said, I'll be putting the UAE on standby. I think they have a very experienced manager. They have a good crop of players, and I think they will compete in this group amongst Iran, Iraq, South Korea, Syria, and Lebanon. When you really think about those teams, I think the UAE has a solid chance of qualifying for the 2022 World Cup hosted in Qatar. Yeah, that's tricky, right? Qatar, their neighbors, they don't, they don't really get along well, but I'll say they, they, had, they have a chance, but I'm not 100% sold on them making the cut. So I'm gonna put them on standby. So have your bags packed, be ready, just in case they say, hey man, you have a seat on this flight. So let's move on to the next team, Lebanon. Judging from my analysis of this Lebanese team, I think they have been very lucky to make it to the, the last 12. Let's just put it that way. And when you look at their record against the better teams in Asia, not such a good record. They, they do bully the minnows, let's just put it that way. And they, they don't have a lot of big players in the team, names that you're gonna be like, yeah, that guy's from Lebanon or anything like that. So it's a team that, in my opinion, to be harsh, they're just making up numbers, seriously, just making up numbers. The newly appointed Czech Republic national, Ivan Hasek as their manager to take them into World Cup qualifiers. Let's see how long he will last because when I did the analysis and you know the whole preparation for this video, the managerial spot was vacant and on July 15th, they appointed Ivan Hasek. So let's see how it will work out for the Lebanon international team, better known as the Cedars. So I think it will struggle and for Lebanon, Visa denied. I'm gonna keep it short and sweet. Just to note that Lebanon are potential debutants at the 2022 World Cup and if they somehow manage to prove me wrong, yeah, they would make their first ever appearance at the major event. Good luck to Lebanon. Trust me, you're gonna need it. So let's move on to another potential debutant in this group and that's Syria who made it as far as the fourth round back in the 2018 cycle and were defeated by Australia. Unfortunately, I was actually rooting for Syria to make it to the Intercontinental Playoff, to play Honduras and to qualify for the 2018 World Cup, but it didn't happen. A lot of things have changed since then. I've seen a lot of new faces in the team. They were quite impressive during qualifiers as well. And you gotta give it to them, man. They, they, they're a hard team to write off. Like if topping their group is not enough to convince you that this Syrian team has potential and can possibly qualify for the 2022 World Cup, I don't know man, you know what I'm saying? Like they were impressive during qualifiers. Even though they lost on the last day to China, they were still good. 
So former player Nizar Mahus is currently in charge of the team and he had a previous stint with the national team as well as the head coach and he has just been put back in charge in 2021. But it's going to be a very tough task for him beating teams like the UAE, South Korea and Iran and look i'm not saying he can't do it i'm not saying syria cannot do it but it, it's it's gonna be very very difficult but judging from the way they played back in 2018 and now again in 2021 they're back into the last round you have to say that this team have been showing progress and they have been showing steady steady progress and development because let's say they made it to the last round in 2018 and then for 2022, they were knocked out already. Then you could have said, yeah, Syria not showing signs of progress. But this, these are signs of progress. So I'm going to be putting Syria on standby. So have your bags packed. Be ready. You know what I mean? Get your toothbrush, your toothpaste, your deodorant. Get all your personal items. Get your gears. You could be going to Qatar. But right now, I'm not 100% sold. Seriously, I'm not. But Syria, you're looking good. Let's just put it that way. Let's talk a bit about Iran. They're currently managed by the Croatian Dragan Skokic and he has a perfect record so far in his tenure. Seven games and seven wins. And if it wasn't for Mr. Skokic, I think Iran would have not have been in the last round because they did not start or qualify as well at all. And there was a big talking point around whether they would actually make it to the final round and qualify for the World Cup, of course. But they managed to pull things together and end up topping the group above a very, very, very spirited Iraqi team, their neighbors, Iraq and they put themselves in a pole position to qualify for back-to-back -back World Cups. Well, I should correct myself and say three consecutive World Cups because they did make it to the 2014 event. But we know Iran are a type of team that could actually miss a World Cup here or there. They first made it in 1978, but didn't make it again until 1998. Missed the World Cup in 2002, came back at 2006, missed it at the 2010 event, and made it back to the 2014 2018 and in my opinion i think this very talented iranian team will definitely be going to qatar with the talent still in that team i think they are definitely in a prime position to make it to qatar even though they had hiccups during qualifiers on the dragon skokic they will make it if he manages to keep his job that is because you know what it is but Iran I think with players like Sada Azmoun, Jahan Bashk, Merita Remy and you still have Ali Reza Beranvan in goal this team still has some quality quality players in their ranks and when you look at the other teams in the group I think they are definitely gonna get the better of most of them and either come in first or second so Iran you are going to Qatar first class the next team that we're going to talk about are the 1986 debutants, Iraq. Yeah, Iraq did make it to a World Cup back in the 80s, but they haven't been back since. They have shown very, very promising signs over the years, but they have somehow fell short. Remember Iraq, our team that won the Asian Cup during the 2000s and all, but wasn't able to actually capitalize on on that golden generation of players but during this cycle they did look good looked like they were going to top their group but fell short to iran so i think that is a sign of this iraqi team that they will show promise but eventually they always seem to fall short and they need to get their house in order because while doing the research and everything for this video preparation when i checked their coaching spot it was vacant you need a coach you need someone to be with this team you need someone to get the players conditioned and not just call up someone a week before the tournament and say hey go out there play get results it doesn't work like that really doesn't and judging from recent results against the better teams in asia and their history and everything during world cup qualifiers so iraq would just miss the flight they're looking good but ah uh, they'll pack their bags they'll head to the airport but something will happen they'll have an accident on the way and they gotta call the police gotta file a police report and by that time the plane would have just left see so iraq you're missing the flight you're not going to qatar let's just put it that way it would be nice if some of these teams does go on to prove me wrong and make the cut because i would love to see some fresh teams at the world cup you know we are used to seeing the same old same old asian teams at the world cup anyways but 
guys come on you know i don't think much have changed and the last team in the group is south korea they're currently managed by the portuguese paulo bento and he has had a very very good record with this team and he has been with the team for quite some time remember at the 2018 world cup south korea were responsible for knocking germany out the thing and this is a team that has always shown promise with guys like han ming sun huang hee chan amongst others these are the most popular players right about now but we're not gonna get into to these south korean names and get my tongue all twisted up okay we're not doing that today but we know south korea are a quality team i'm not gonna say they're the best team in asia but they have shown a lot of promise and they have been a world cup regular over the years and when i say world cup regular over the years i mean south korea have qualified for every single world cup since the 1990 ha huh, you gotta give it to this team and look i'm gonna keep this short and sweet when you look at the opponents in the group here I think some of them could be potential banana peels for South Korea, but eventually I think Paulo Bento and his boys have a very good chemistry and uh, they have a lot of talent in their team, not just Son and Huang Hee Chan, and they would uh, be going to Qatar. So South Korea, you're going to Qatar. Pack your bags, first class. So that's it for Group A. So we're gonna move on to group B. Guys, this is fun, right? I know, I know, I know, I know, it's fun. So let's kick things off in group B with Vietnam, who could be potential debutants at the 2022 event. And this will be the first time ever in the history that they're making it to the final round of AFC Asian World Cup qualifiers. Vietnam were in the same group as the UAE and they have been showing some promise over the last few years. Did well at the last Asian Cup where they made it to the quarterfinals and they have some very neat players within their ranks. Vietnam are currently coached by the South Korean Park Hang Seo and his record with the national team is nothing short of brilliant. So the fact that they're making it to the final round for the first time in their history, they did well at the Asian Cup. This, this is progress shown by this Vietnam team that has some talented players in their ranks. And the players I know from Vietnam are Win Kong Farm and Win Kong Hai. These are some very, very talented forward players with a lot of flair but i don't think they have enough in them to topple the other teams in the group because if you go back and you check vietnam's record and you see the teams that they've been picking up wins against and the teams that they haven't been picking up wins against you know the teams that they've been beating are the minnows when they play against the better teams they fall short so in my opinion for vietnam i'm gonna deny you the visa you're not going to qatar let's just let's it's gonna take a miracle let us move on and let's talk about japan japan are currently managed by former player hajime moriyasu and they were last at the world cup in 2018 where they made it to the round of 16 and did give belgium a run for their money we could all remember that but for japan they have qualified for every single world cup since 1998 and in my opinion are actually the best team in asia despite them not winning the last asian cup where they got battered by qatar but look with the exception of qatar who won the asian cup i think japan are the best team you, is that a bit confusing though i think they're the best team but they didn't win the asian cup it's gonna be very difficult to beat japan and i think without going too deep into players and going deep you know doing a deep dive on japan guys come on man japan pack your bags you're going to qatar first class you're the first matter of fact you're the first team on the plane no one else gets on the plane before japan all right get the japanese team on the plane and matter of fact we're taking them to qatar first and coming back for the rest teams that's how good they are and as i said i won't be getting into the names the entire roster is filled with talent in defense midfield and attack and i think moriyasu is a lucky man that he has this pool of players to work with so japan i think might even go on to top this group let me make an early prediction right here so for japan you're going to qatar that was easy i like that you're easy thanks so let's move on to china where they're currently managed by the former player Li Taiyi. i think i said that right i actually said that in chinese <laughs> oh wow that was impressive 
But let's talk about China. When you talk about China, you think about the Chinese Super League. The Chinese team debuted at the 2002 World Cup, but haven't made it back since. They have made it to the final round on a few occasions, but they, they, they uh, came up short. Let's just put it that way. Look, for this Chinese team to qualify for the 2022 World Cup, they would need to put out a clinic. They would need to put out a really great performance and they do have some naturalized brazilian citizens in their team and that could actually help and i forgot to mention the uae does have some naturalized argentinians and brazilians in their 11 too so i just remember that when i'm thinking about china so that's why they put the uae on standby but for china i think when they come up against the better oppositions in asia they kind of struggle could that change? It, it can. But, hmm. I think this Chinese team, hmm. When you think about the Chinese Super League, has it really helped the national team by bringing in all these star players, paying them big money, let them rub shoulders with the Chinese nationals? Has the talent rub off on these Chinese players? I, I honestly don't know. They do have some talented players like Wu Lei, and some of the naturalized Brazilians. In that way, the Chinese Super League have helped the Chinese national team, but I think it's gonna be a little bit too much to ask of China in this group, and I think they're gonna miss the flight. So sorry, China, you're not going to Qatar. You could go, but you gotta prove me wrong. So let's move on to the next team, Oman, who are making it to their third final round of World Cup qualifiers. Look, this Omani team are currently managed by Branko Ivankovic, who's a Croatian, and he has had a good record with the team. You got to give it to Oman. I think they kind of locked out with their group being in the same group as Qatar, India, Afghanistan, Bangladesh. That was an easy group, man, with the exception of the playing against Qatar. That was an easy group, and they got through. But I think this Omani team, they have some talent. They won the Gulf Cup, I think, back in 2017. And they have been showing some competitive spirit. But when you look at the other teams in the group here, I, I, I think it's going to be really, really rough. It's going to be hard. So for, for Oman, look, you cannot write them off 100%. But I think they're going to miss the flight. I seem like China, they're going to miss the flight. I think China is a, is a little better than Oman. But for Oman, come on, man. For me to predict Oman to go to Qatar, people be like, are you crazy or something? <laughs> Even to put the word start by, are you crazy, dumb? So I'm going to say they missed the flight. And with that being said, we have two teams left. And just to note, Oman are potential debutants for Qatar 2022 as they have never qualified for the World Cup in the past. But we have two teams left to finish off this tier list and those teams are Australia and Saudi Arabia. So let's talk a bit about Saudi Arabia who did make it to the World Cup back in 2018 and have been World Cup regulars over the years. They're currently managed by the Frenchman Herve Renard who is renowned for managing international teams. His record with the Saudi Arabian team has been nothing short of stellar and he have the Saudis looking good going into qualifiers. Saudi Arabia is a very difficult team to analyze, right? where they had a golden generation from 1994 to 2002, but missed every World Cup from then on until 2018. So are they back? You see what I'm saying? So it's question, it's a question. It, it, you, you seem to question yourself whenever it comes to Saudi Arabia. Are they back or are they still like in a transition period where some of the better players from 2018 have been phased out and they have a new crop of players coming through? They have a good manager in Herve Renard and it, it's, a, it's a very difficult team to analyze and I don't really know where they're at if they're definitely going to Qatar or if they're like, oh, I don't know, but they just might qualify. So for Saudi Arabia, though, they do have a lot of talent in their team. You know, guys like Behabri, you think about Fahad al Mualad, you think about Salem al Dosari, and a few young, talented players coming through the ranks. They have a, a good outfit, and I, I think they, they, they will challenge within this group. And I think they'll do just enough to be on standby, in my opinion. I'm not going to throw them into going to Qatar. 
I'm not I'm not fully sold on Saudi Arabia yet, so I'm gonna say you're on standby. I think that's fair enough, and think that's a fair analysis of the Saudi Arabian team. Because look at the other teams in the group, right? You have Japan, Australia, Vietnam, who could cause some trouble. Oh man. So I could see Saudi Arabia kind of dropping points along the way but might still get enough points to even come in third and make it to the playoffs and go on to the intercontinental playoff final and all of that so i think saudi arabia will be in the mix to qualify for qatar 2022 but i'm not gonna say i'm 100 percent sold on saudi arabia and last but not least in group b last but not least in this tailless video is australia Australia first made it to the World Cup back in 1974, but were absent up until 2006. They used to be part of the Oceania Confederation, but since they have made their switch to the AFC, they have qualified for every single World Cup since. They qualified for 2006, 10, 14, and 18. So what does that tell you? Listen, this Australian team under Graham Arnold have not been the best looking Australian team, but I think they have shown promise and they have shown a lot of continuity. The squad have transitioned well from that golden generation and they have ha always had these neat little players, these effective players within their ranks. And judging from what they did during qualifiers, impressive. If you look at their group, the teams that they have to play against in their group, a China, a Oman, a Vietnam, I think Australia are going to pick up points against these teams. Maybe not Japan. Maybe not so much against Saudi Arabia. Maybe they get a draw or a win or, you know. But I think this will be enough. This will be just enough for Australia to scrape and come in second in this group. This group is a little bit more easier to predict. And I think Australia are going to just come in second. They could place third. But for now, I think Australia are going to Qatar. So big up to all the Australians watching this, you know what I mean? Uh, so guys, thanks for watching another tailless video. I'm your boy Dominic Rich. Make sure you subscribe if you're new. Like the video if you like it. Let me know your thoughts down below. And until next time, peace out. Rich Squad. Peace.